Okay, today I'm going to talk about um, Darwin and Darwin's theory of natural selection. This, this theory is kind of paramount to your understanding of evolution. And I'm going to start with this quote that's in front of you. Um, and it helps, I think, kind of clarify what natural selection is all about. Uh, Darwin said, it's not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent that survives. It's the one most adaptable to change. So the idea that species can change and have the ability to change and the genetic variation to change is really what's important. It's not about being the strongest or the fastest. Sometimes we say survival of the fittest. Well, really, it depends on your environment and the selective forces that are going on in there as to what makes you fit. So here's a picture of Darwin as an ape. You can see he was very controversial uh, in 1859 and, and shortly after when he published his book. Uh, and he's still controversial today, which seems surprising, but there are people that still uh, don't accept Darwin's theories. But let's talk about him anyway. First off, a little bit about Darwin's life. So in the early 1800s, he got hired to work on a, a boat, traveled around the world as a naturalist, went to the Galapagos Islands, discovered iguanas and finches and tortoises and all this stuff. Also found fossils and you know earthquakes and geological things um, that were of interest and of note. Uh, and and through all this, through his travels, he come, came up with this idea that species must change over time. But he just came back and just kind of thought about that. Then he kind of made a lot of more observations. He looked at how he was a, a pigeon breeder. He bred pigeons and he found that he could select for certain traits in those pigeons and he saw that what we've done with horses and cows and sheep is that we've actually been able to change these species through artificial selection. So he said if humans can do this well certainly nature can select for certain traits right um, so then Darwin thought well how does this happen what's the means by which this happens there were some people that had already come up with different ideas for evolution but then he came up with this idea of natural selection and he was um, influenced by this guy named Thomas Malthus who wrote about overpopulation how all species tend to overpopulate grow faster than they can sustain their numbers um, and then a guy named Alfred Wallace came along and said hey I've got this idea about evolution and this my idea of it is by means of natural selection Darwin said oh that's my idea too let's publish together so that's what they did so here's Charles Darwin and Alfred Wallace and in 1859 they said ah oh, we got this great idea let's put it out there together and, and they did um, so at that point on we've we've kind of wrestled with Darwin's idea, but it's always stood the test of time. This theory is pretty much accepted now by biologists and by most scientists. Um, so it's not really under debate anymore. Um, but first, let's talk about Darwin wasn't the first to come up with the idea of evolution. Uh, this guy Jean-Baptiste Lamarck, a, a Frenchman, was uh, about 60 years before Darwin. Um, and he saw that species changed and that fossils showed change over time. Um, but he came up with this idea of acquired characteristics, that you can do something during your life to change and that you change, that you pass on that change. And he had an example of the giraffe. He said the, gira the giraffe's neck gets longer due to constantly stretching for food. This acquired characteristic is then passed on to the next generation. And we can think about that. If I go to the gym and I work out, my muscles will get larger. Or I can do things. I can develop thick calluses on my hands by working with my hands every day. But where we realize he was incorrect is that I won't pass those acquired traits onto my offspring. I can change my, my phenotype, my, my look, but I won't pass those on. Those are not in my genes, right? And Darwin didn't know anything about DNA or genes or heredity. Uh, but he did know that we tended to pass on our traits to our offspring, and that's kind of important in his theory. Okay, so a couple ideas central to natural selection. So if you look at these Asian beetles, this is a, they're all the same species, and you can see they're not all the same, right? They're, they're variations within this population, and that was important. Uh, you have to have variation within species. If everyone is the same, then you can't have evolution. You can't have any individuals having an advantage and passing on their traits. You must first have variation within all species. Okay, so examples of variation. Darwin, when he went to the Galapagos, he saw that the tortoises on each island had different size shells and shapes of shells. He saw that finches on different islands had different 
size beaks and their beaks always seemed to be best suited for the food that was on that island. If they were cracking large nuts, they had a big powerful beak. If they were eating small tiny grass seed, they had much smaller, finer beaks. And uh, he noted that uh, all these different finches seemed to really be best suited for whatever that the food was on that island. Other examples of variation, right, we can see in these shells. So if you're on a white sandy beach, right, certain shells are going to have a better advantage if they're trying to avoid predation from birds or from predators, right? If it's a darker beach, right, you're going to see some of these darker shells will probably have better, better camouflage, right? So that if the environment changes, there will be some within that population that are still well suited for that environment and will have a greater chance of surviving, okay? Um, again, with humans, we're a naked primate, so one of the most obvious ways we are ver have variation is with our skin pigmentation, right? So we, all these different pigmentations, yet we're all the same species. There's a tremendous variation within the human population. Okay, Darwin's second idea he got from this uh, preacher named Thomas Malthus, who talked about overpopulation and how populations grow exponentially, um, and realizing that there's not resources for exponential growth. You can't continue to grow that fast forever, right? So he realized that there's overpopulation within all species, and because of that, only some will be able to survive. Those that have the best adaptations for their survival, those that can avoid predation and avoid parasites and find a mate and reproduce. So only some within these this huge uh, population will be able to survive and pass on their genes. So you have to have, again, overpopulation to have differential survival, which is important for natural selection. And then the last idea, <coughs> or third idea, is that some of these variations increase your chances of survival, and he called those adaptations. So for example, if you look at this orchid manis, uh, it's pink, and it looks just like the pink orchids that it hangs out on and traps and kills pollinators that are coming by for the nectar. If this was a brown or a blue or a um, green mantis, it, it would not be as successful in capturing prey and getting food, right? The fact that it looks just like the flowers makes gives it a, an advantage over other colored mantises. So over time you can imagine that this coloration evolved as those mantises that hung out on these pink flowers were more successful at capturing and getting food and being able to survive and reproduce. So a good example of an adaptation that increases your chances of survival. So we put all those ideas together and we have idea number four. These adaptations will be passed on to future generations and they will cause change over time, evolution, or what Darwin called descent with modification. So you can see here within a population, we've got a bunch of insects. If we start introducing a pesticide and spray, we're going to kill most of them, right? These guys all die with this green gene. But this guy's got this resistant gene on there, the red gene. He's going to survive, and he's going to pass on that gene to offspring, right? And then they're going to pass that gene on to offspring. So we know from um, developing pesticides and antibiotics that repeated use of the same pesticide or the same antibiotic or the same selective factor over time leads to natural selection. We've seen this in species. They've become resistant to pesticides. They've become resistant to drugs and antibiotics. And so we've observed Darwin's theory of natural selection. Again, it's no longer just sort of a hypothesis or a theory. It's really now an accepted foundation of biology, that populations change through time, and that force of that change is natural selection. And over time, we call that change evolution. So this is just an introduction to Darwin's theory of natural selection, Darwin's theory of natural selection.